Hello guys, this is Vaish. So the Afghanistan issue is something which is uh, being discussed everywhere, all the media across the world. Because uh, if you see more than COVID news, now you are seeing Afghanistan news, which was not the case one week back. So what is this entire thing? You have to know because uh, Taliban is not something which came today or started today. It was there and it ruled over Afghanistan once upon a time. So the rise of Taliban, before which there was... Uh, there's a Mujahideen group. After Taliban, there was Al-Qaeda group and Osama bin Laden and the history of his entire history. Okay, because that is something which is not covered in detail in the internet. So I will do that 4,000 years of Afghan history with you, of which the majority of the ancient timeline is not very important to you. But I will take you through the entire thing and tell you how uh, this Afghanistan area became geopolitically very important. And so this will be part one. And I don't know how many parts it will take. Two to three parts is enough, I think. So this part one, please watch it, share and uh, make it reach more people. Only then we'll be able to do that extra effort to cover the newer parts. So this is one video, the live scenes of the presidential palace, uh, which I shared in Vice Courses channel. You can go and watch this also in the link I'll put in description. So these people, if you can see from the uh, behavior itself, you can know like how much uh, literacy these people would have and uh, what is their kind of lifestyle. Okay, because they believe in just having three times uh, food a day and then uh, take this gun and go and uh, kill people who doesn't uh, uh, believe in their uh, Sharia laws or any Islamic uh, whatever hardcore beliefs they have. Okay, it's not proper Islam. It is the uh, modified version of Islam to suit their needs and their taste. So they are not going to do any development. They are not going to do anything for the people. Okay, education, health and all. And if anybody will oppose it, only hope is the Northern Alliance, which is another thing which you will understand by the end of the series. Okay, maybe not in this video, but I'll tell you. This is today's news. Northern Alliance kind of 2.0, you can tell. Their flag is hoisted and this is like the first resistance against Taliban. So what is this Northern Alliance? Who are these people who is against Taliban? This and all you will know when you watch this entire series. Okay, so again, if you see here, Taliban changes the name. Afghanistan name is changed to Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan. So you will be now, because following social media now, you think like this is something new. This is not new actually. 1996, earlier when Taliban took over, that time also the name was changed to the same thing. Okay, then it took many years for people to uh, fight with them and then push them back. And actually, people who are trolling USA and all nowadays on the internet, they have failed. That is true. But once upon a time, USA had pushed back the Taliban behind and then some kind of democracy was put into place. Okay, but again, they came back. This USA itself uh, did not properly do it. Funding was being received by the Taliban people. They again grew. Now themselves, now when USA left it, they have left many tanks and many things for them to explore. And that is how USA is can be blamed, but you cannot tell like US have not succeeded any time in point of history. Entire thing you will learn in this series. Okay, so again, going forward, 1960s, if you see, this is how the Afghanistan uh, women uh, folk, you can tell, it will be like this and many more developmental things I'll show you with pictures because that is more interesting to see how they were participating in all the government activities and present day, I'm not telling the present Afghan uh, democratic rule when the king or sorry, when the president was there, if Taliban is going to rule for the next uh, th three years or five years, this is how the women will be uh, living their lives. Okay, because it has happened in the past, they publicly uh, kill women just because their eyes or face were visible. Uh, videos are there on the internet, you can go and watch that. And these are again other news items. Okay, before going to history, news items, I'm just brushing it up. If you see amusement parks, they are playing like this because in childhood, these people would not have never gone to school or park or anything. Now they are feeling like uh, very like enjoying these kind of things. And uh, they have burned down uh, some amusement park also that videos are being deleted on the internet also. So that you can see. Then in the gym, these things are there in WhatsApp. This video is going on. And the uh, new rules for women. Okay, this is not the new rules which came now, but last time, according to 2001 report, when last time when they came, these were the uh, rules for women. Women had to cover uh, this uh, full head to toe. Then women are not allowed to work except in very limited circumstances. Women are uh, barred from attending schools. Women's health care was restricted. Women were not allowed to leave their homes unless they were accompanied by male relatives. Women could uh, use this uh, special buses, okay, but no taxis, also only with uh, relatives. Then women could not uh, be with men who are not related to them on the street. So as I told, it was like very uh, pathetic kind of life and that is going to return to Afghanistan. I'm sure that whatever they tell, like we are caring for the people and all these things, it's not going to happen. People are going to suffer there. That is why they are running out of the country. You would have seen the scenes of uh, aeroplanes and all. This is uh, again today's news like dry fruits price increase in Jammu and Kashmir. So this again is related. This is again related because Jammu and Kashmir is, sorry, Afghanistan is a place where uh, the best of uh, this uh, dry fruits, apricots, this uh, uh, normal fruits also, everything in bulk we import. Okay, not only India, everywhere where in the world they import a lot of dry fruits and fruits from Afghanistan but now because of the Taliban thing and the borders are shut down airspace is shut down everything is shut down import export is not happening and so the prices are increasing so this is how the small small ways economy related affecting effect uh, will be there in Indian economy okay so I'm just showing you and these are the scenes of 19 
60s, I would say, when the king and queen of different countries uh, come and participate, the people are there welcoming them. People are uh, dancing in their local uh, dresses, you can see here. So it was a very peaceful, prosperous kind of country, you can say, with this uh, large printing press uh, photo I, uh, you are seeing here. And then again, this uh, automobile uh, factories and workshops, this kind of things used to happen. Like whatever happening in Europe, that same thing used to happen in uh, Afghanistan as well. Okay, this is one of the roads there in uh, Kabul, uh, Herat road, route and all. And this is like destroyed after this uh, terrorism and Talibanism already started. This road is now not existing. Okay, this you, if you see in Europe also in those days, this is how the situation was. But this and all is destroyed because of this uh, the Talibanism. Okay, and these are people there, women, you can see people, tourists used to come. It used to be one of the most favorite tourist uh, destination also. That also you will learn as the series goes ahead so where is this afghanistan we are talking like afghanistan till long time now where is afghanistan it is here okay so this map if you see india is here and india's bordering country whether afghanistan touches india that is uh, touching okay here if you see the small area here it is touching but now technically this area is not with us it is a pok region and china pakistan is ruling this area but uh, in Indians, uh, border countries, if we tell Afghanistan is a border and we have to write that in answer also if question is coming. And Afghanistan uh, is the country with the smallest border with India because just a tiny touching is there. Okay. But if you see Bangladesh, Bangladesh is the longest border with India. Then we have China, we have Pakistan, we have Myanmar, we have Bhutan, we have Nepal. So seven, eight countries are there which touches the border. Sri Lanka, we have a sea connection here. So these are the bordering countries. Okay. Which is important for your UPSG and competitive exam. So why this is uh, the problem? Okay. Because this is a, a major, uh, uh, what to say, geopolitical area between uh, two big kingdoms which in the modern times you will see but first we will see the uh, ancient times and before that you have to know a term graveyard of empires okay afghanistan is called the graveyard of empires and this term who coined this term nobody knows and whether it is like uh, acceptable or not that also nobody knows it is still disputed and why i'll tell you it is disputed because it, graveyard of empire means whichever empire comes there they will not be able to flourish and they will uh, be like uh, going away from there okay they'll get destroyed so that is the uh, theme and based on that lot of cartoons also came if you see uk came in 19th century and died and ussr came in 20th century died and now usa came in 21st century they are also returning okay so this during the obama times and all this kind of cartoons used to come even when trump came if you see uh, here people are sitting and telling welcome to afghanistan find a spot anywhere you like okay this is what these people are telling and see Arabs, British, Persian, Mongols, Alexander, USSR, they are showing this. But this is not completely true because I told USS have seen success, Alexander have seen success, Genghis Khan, Mongols have seen success. There are many people. So I will show you first uh, who all succeeded in the past uh, when they came to Afghanistan. In 500 BC, Darius I of Babylonia, he came and conquered Afghanistan. Uh, 329 BC, Alexander the Great, he came, he also conquered. He actually lost when he wanted to enter India. Okay, Till then he has succeeded the entire from Europe to uh, this place, uh, Afghanistan, he had succeeded. Then in 11th century, Mahmud of Ghazni, you know, who even came to India in Gujarat and uh, plundered the Somnath temple for 17 times. He was successful in Afghanistan. After that, Cengiz Khan, who will be the uh, grandfather kind of relation uh, when you take Mongol, sorry, Mughal kingdoms, Babar and all. The Cengiz Khan timeline also, uh, they succeeded. Okay, so it's like that time, it was entire success. But the modern days, as I told, UK, USSR, they have failed. But these people, whoever have come to conquer Afghanistan, they all have succeeded. Okay, first thing is that time, uh, the Islam and all just started. Okay, till the 7th century, you know, there is no Islam itself. So kingdoms are also the other European kingdoms or any other uh, kingdoms which are coming to attack. Others don't even bother to attack. They are happy with wherever they are. So this uh, entire kind of series, okay, if you are liking, okay, please uh, see to it that you go and watch our Israel series also. Two videos are there, which has got tremendous response that two days when we uploaded. But after that, due to some reason, it did not reach much people. So watch the Lakshadweep series also along with this. These are the things which will help you understand the uh, detailing from end to end. Okay, it's not going to be like other channels are doing like one day news, one day news. It is going to be the entire history. So please uh, watch that and we'll continue now based on the timeline. So the index which I am going to teach you, okay, one is the most ancient timeline that is the, from the 2500 BC till the modern times of 17th century. So, so that will be the first part. Then 17th century will be the first time Afghan got an identity for itself and first time modernization has begun. Then 1800s British will come and when uh, they'll fight with Afghanistan. 1900s the Durand line which is the border line that will be formed. Internal politics, internal king and queen, internal rulers that and all we'll discuss. The 1970s is when Russia, uh, Russia will be entering and Russia was Afghanistan. A lot of things are there to learn. Then 19 1980 to 2001, the Mujahideen, the Taliban, the USA, these kind of things are going on. Then uh, even Osama bin Laden. Then 2001 to 2021, the modern uh, Taliban, Al Qaeda, USA, where uh, he, uh, sorry, Osama bin Laden will run from country to country. Then he will do the bombing. He will again resurface and put out a video message. So all those things in maybe in the second part or third part we'll cover. So this is the index of this whole series. Okay, hope it's clear now so that we can begin now with the ancient timeline.
So ancient timeline, if you take the first is like 2400 BC, that is when India had the Indus Valley civilization, Harappan civilization, which is also a Bronze Age. They also had a Bronze Age civilization. So obviously it is going to be modern. They knew the, knew the art of mixing copper with tin and all. And they had an Oxus civilization, which is there in Afghanistan, Turkmenistan, Uz Uzbekistan, Tajikistan. These are the Central Asian countries. Okay. Even now the President Ashraf Ghani, Afghanistan, he has uh, by, I think, land route or I don't know how he escaped. He has escaped to the Tajikistan region, which is touching Afghanistan. Okay. So this area had a bronze age oxus civilization during those days then after that uh, 1500 bc almost when the harappan civilization ended there is a mention of this uh, rigvedic time and all when it begins this uh, gandhara civilization which will become the modern kandahar uh, there uh, this thing is mentioned a civilization called gandhara civilization is mentioned in the rigveda and also in the zen Devasta, which is the zoroastrian book okay in that also it's mentioned so this is 1500 bc later coming down in the seventh uh, century and all kabul will come under uh, something called a median empire again not at all important for you but i am just taking you the timeline a median empire will come okay then after that when you take ahead timeline first century now we are going to ad okay 19 ad 30 ad so ad when we go you know the most important empire is kushan empire which you are also studying for your exams kushan empire will start uh, uh, in 30 or maybe first century ad will start it but uh, uh, in different books it will be showing in different ways so till 375 ad they are there so you cannot tell all empires came and failed all these people were hugely successful and they were ruling the entire kashmir afghan all those regions these people were occupying okay so if you see 120 ad 150 ad 191 ad all are kanishka and their kingdom the kanishka is the most important kingdom of Kushana. So Kanishka and his uh, stupa is built. Then again, Vasudeva one become the empire. So this kind of uh, rules are going on. After that, the, uh, this Huns will come. HUN. Okay, HUN is Huns. Here, White Huns. These people will come in the 320 AD, 440 AD, and then Kushanas will die off. So like that, many kingdoms were ruling in uh, this particular place. Okay. Now, after that, what happens? 570 AD and all, this Buddhas, Buddhism will get prevalent. You know, you know, Buddha, Buddhism was there since the 600 BC and all. So it started spreading here and there. So the Buddhas of uh, Bamiyan, okay, the statues which later Taliban will destroy, that also photos I'll show you. The smaller of the Buddhas of Bamiyan, which is Eastern Buddha, larger of the Buddhas of Bamiyan, which is Western Buddha, these things were set up. Then this Chinese scholar started coming into those areas, you know, Suan Zhang, who came into India also during the time of Harsha. And uh, he visits there. So I'm not going to read everything, but you have to see the transition when this uh, religion is changing. First Hindu kings were there or Greeks or Europeans were there. Then this uh, Buddhism is there. Chinese travelers are coming. And here if you see Buddhist, Turkey, Shah dynasty is there. Okay. After that here now, if you see 680, 683, this is the time when Islamic kingdom started coming. Okay. Zunbil dynasty or this Caliphate under these people, which again, names are not important for you, but see the timeline. So these are coming. Then the 9th century, again, if you see uh, defeat of the Turk Shahis by the Arab uh, Abbasid Caliphate. Okay. So these people are uh, getting uh, like uh, what is the Buddhism kingdom is ending and then now there will be Islamic kingdom, there will be Hindu Shah dynasty. So now they will start fighting with each other. Hindu and Muslim fights will start and these are the statues if you see Buddhas and uh, these are getting destroyed. They already got destroyed and with modern technology now with uh, laser hologram and all they are uh, showing like this. For tourism people when they go there this is how you can see it okay with the new uh, laser projections. Else there was a statue like this which got destroyed okay because these people go and attack everything which is uh, not in terms with their Sharia or whatever. It's not even Islam as I told. It's a sect of Islam which uh, has very uh, strict orthodox rules which is not acceptable by anyone usually but there are people in India also supporting them I don't know why they support but uh, that is happening okay and now if you see 10th century AD. Okay, here again see Jayapala of Hindusha dynasty. Like this, some things are there and they are having invasions with Ghasni and all. So that kind of things are going on. And 1001, Mahmud of Ghasni, as I told, who will defeat him. So again, Hindu-Muslim fight is going on, going on. And here, Mughal, okay, Mongol. Who, if you see two people are there, one is Cengiz Khan here and one is uh, Timur. Okay, these are actually like the father's side and mother's side of the later Mughal empire. Babar, Humayun Akbar, which starts later. Their grandfather side, if you take, one is the father's side, one is the mother's side, one is Cengiz Khan group and one is Timur group. Okay, so they only were called the Mong Mongol Empire, which later Britishers wrote like Mughal Empire when they came to India. Okay. Mughals actually themselves did not call them Mughal. Whatever is shown in movies and all in Jodha Akbar and all, that is wrong. They never called them Mughals. They just uh, did not like being referred to as Mongols because Mongols, uh, Cengiz Khan was little uh, brutal in terms of all the things. So they never liked, but Britishers called these people Mughals. We are also calling them as Mughals. Okay, these are interesting historical things which maybe some people don't know. So like this uh, 13th, 14th century, these people are coming and invading Afghanistan and all. Cengiz Khan will die, Timur will die. And later, you know, the next generation, 16th century, Babur will come. So Babur in 1504, that is 20, 22 years before the first battle of Panipat. 
first battle of Panipat is when Babar enters India. He will uh, defeat Ibrahim Lodi and then the Mughal Empire is actually set up. But before that, 1504, when he was very young actually, I think 13 years or 20 years old, he captured this uh, Fargana and this uh, Samarkand, the Central Asian regions and Kabul. So siege of Kabul 1504 is related to Babar. So we have this is the entire ancient part. Okay, I hope it's clear. In very short time, I have taken you from 2500 BC to 16th century, which is the ancient medieval history part. Okay, of what happened in Afghanistan and Kabul region. Now we have to study the modern times. So modern times, 1700s, if you take, this is the series of event. So now a new uh, a person or new uh, factor you have to consider is the tribal chiefs. In Afghanistan, there are a lot of tribes. So from that only actually this uh, Pashtuns and this uh, Taliban and all these things started coming out. Okay. So some person, Mir Mirwais Hotak, okay, he is the first influential Afghan tribal chief. He gained independence at Kandahar. Okay. Like Babar, you know, was there in uh, Kabul region. In Kandahar region, he will uh, gain power and he will now start fighting against the uh, this uh, Safavid dynasty, which is in Iran. Okay. In that full map, when I showed you, okay, uh, again, one more map I'll show you. You will, you should understand that Iran was always independent by itself and Afghanistan also by different, different people. But British and US could not enter there, British, Russia and all. Okay. So now uh, this kind of tribal chiefs are there and I'm not reading all this. These are different, different fights. They all will fight with each other. Finally, one Nadir Shah will come. This is not that Nadir Shah which we study in other places and all because you know Nadir Shah from Iran will come to India and he will take away the peacock throne, the Kohinoor diamond and all from Shah Jahan. That is a different person. This is some other Nadir Shah. So like that, a lot of battles happen. And finally, this person you have to know, Ahmad Shah Durrani of Abdali. Ahmad Shah Abdali, you know, I think the third battle of Panipat, he only will be fighting in 1760s in India. So he uh, uh, declared, okay, the first uh, independent Afghanistan. Okay, the Confederacy declared the establishment of an independent Afghanistan with its capital at uh, Kandahar. Okay, so these are all this kind of tribal people and all these people who made up a dynasty. So these are all internal politics. Now there is no British, there is no USA, there is no Russia, nobody is there. They are all fighting and this happened. Okay, now... 1747. Now we have to go to the further timeline, 1800s, because you know, now is the time when Europeans are getting powerful, because uh, you know, Vasco da Gama came in 1498, then 15th century, 16th century, you, uh, Spain, Portugal, uh, Danish, Dutch, uh, Europeans, French, every, uh, sorry, England, French, everyone are uh, coming to take more and more places. So 1800s, uh, what will happen? By this time, if you see, the Russian Empire is such a very big empire and then British India is like this. Okay, this is what happened and China is that time not at all powerful. They have their own dynasties and their own stories. That is different part. Okay, and here if you see, Persia is alone. Okay, Iran and then Afghanistan. So this is why geopolitically from that day, it is very, very important because Russia and uh, British India being the most powerful, they want this area because they are always uh, like, it's like very what to say, they will expect like maybe what if Russia enter here and they will come and attack us or maybe British will enter here and they will attack them. So these two people always wanted to capture Afghanistan and that is why even now uh, we can tell uh, the greed for power between these two is resulted in the full problems now, the modern day problems. But earlier, as I told before, also there were many people internally fighting there, okay, which we'll learn in the uh, next slides. Okay, the modernization of uh, this thing will start. Now, uh, the Britishers fight, okay, what happened is Britain looking to protect its Indian empire from Russia attempted to annex Afghanistan, resulting in a series of wars. And that wars are called Anglo-Afghan War, which in detail I have taught you, 1838 to 42, 1878 to 80, 1890, sorry, 1990 to 21, three big wars will happen, which is covered in detail in my Spectrum Modern History. Okay, this was actually, see, December 6, 2017, I recorded. Four years back, I recorded this. So this is relevant even now. You can go and see all the places which British people uh, occupied, including India and 1857 revolt, everything is there. So in this video, Burma, Nepal, Bhutan, Afghan, all the wars in very much detail fashion it's there the slides i can show you here itself if you see uh now we are telling like uh, joe biden the u.s president when he went back everybody are telling like uh, his foolishness he did a very blunder kind of thing you should know in uk time also there were people who were doing blunders okay this auckland was the governor general of britain he actually uh had a forward policy and he it, it's actually called auckland's folly his foolishness he came with so much confidence but the afghan uh, tribal people and those the kings who were there that time they defeated and threw him away okay so this is in general but this detailing you have to go and watch this video i cannot explain it will take lot of time so like this wars were happening and one thing about british you have to know is they are very clever people they never had the power to defeat anyone by themselves they always will go and sign treaties and make you fight with each other okay so if you see they entered into a tripartite treaty with the sikh uh, sikhs were very powerful that time you know raja ranjit singh and all was there then shah shuja was there who was thrown out from afghan so these three people will come together and go and fight with this uh, dost muhammad who was there in afghanistan so many many stories are there but british is always like that and seeing this what will happen russia also will withdraw Persia also will withdraw because they think like they have a very powerful team. We cannot go and fight with them. Okay. 
so like this first war was there but first war actually uh, britain will lose that is why it is called auckland's fall folly then second war will happen because by, after that auckland will go away john lawrence will come john lawrence is like uh, uh, like masterly inactivity meaning he is not want to uh, go war and all he don't have attack afghanistan he simply had friendship with them and didn't do anything okay but the next person who comes lytton he is like a proud reserve he is policy okay it's called so he did not want to leave it unattended he will go and attack them okay the whoever is there some sher ali and all then the second anglo afghan war will happen so he will invade afghan Pakistan and that person will run away. Then one treaty will be there, and it was in favor of UK that that war will end. And second Anglo-Afghan war, British will win. Okay, so again detailing, go and watch that video. It's important for your exam. And by 1919, if you see this open war, this is the next war, Afghan uh, this war. And after this war only, actually Afghanistan becomes independent in a more uh, better way. Okay, so these three wars are there. With you again, go and watch that video. But the summary I have put in another slide here uh, to just uh, take you through again the same event. Okay, so 1809, Durrani, a person there signed a treaty of alliance with the UK. 1819 some battle will happen where the ranjit singh will win the battle and he will get kashmir okay now full stories if you see there are three four characters one is the sikh army one is this uh, british kingdom one is the afghan tribal chiefs okay these are the ones who are fighting with each other so those mohammed khan a person was there he took the throne in kabul and he proclaimed himself emir so this emir emirates this term now in taliban also you are seeing right they this is what they used to call like some people call them russia's people will call them sar like c z d r sar and uh, other people will call them shah s h a h so like that everyone has their own terminology okay okay badsha or khan or something so here if it's emir okay if it's Afga afghanistan they used to call them emir now some battle again happen again raja ranjit singh is winning again capturing peshawar valley so he was successful in every battle he used to win later he will uh, lose and he will die then this uh, siege of herat if you see herat is very important place so when i am telling this many places it's better i show you the map okay in map if you see this is kandahar this is kabul this is hindukush uh, mountains this is this uh, kondos then this is mazar e sharif herat these are all asked in upsc exam also you should know the place name like at least you should know this is located in afghanistan okay and quetta at that time this area was together so that also was part of like uh, afghan pakistan region. Region. now it is in pakistan okay and uh, again more details if you see the uh, map this is called gasni okay we keep telling gasni this is the area gos called gasni and this is zaranj it's important because india is trying to build a very big highway from zaranj through iran it is coming and building a big road to go enter into central asia but now after taliban comes i don't think this will uh, be pro successful but uh, these are the areas okay now first again same thing first anglo afghan war where they captured quetta british captured uh, gasni like that first first they got some uh, uh, success and they put a puppet ruler then they had that tripartite uh, this thing and all russia withdrew all stories i told you then here again a uh, british envoy was killed and uh, again some elvinstone army you know in uh, our indian history also we study him so he will be going and then he will be massacred by the afghans so that's what i told uh, first war he will lose and then afghanistan declared war on persia and recaptured herat so like this many many fightings are going on it's like uh, too much uh, nonsense which is not required for exams also see se uh, uh, second war treaty of gandamak is there and which britishers will be in a better position after that uh, abdul rahman khan he was officially recognized as the emir of afghanistan and uh, this is important because he is the one who will be establishing the agreement for the durand line okay this durand line is something which you which is very important for you you know the radcliffe line is between india and pakistan and the mcmahon line is between india and china same like the durand line is in between uh british india of that time and afghanistan okay so if you see durand line 1893 okay but problem is pashtun population which is their uh, most important population that is spread across both sides okay and because of that more fight will happen same like now if you see this is pakistan pakistan is telling like our muslims are there in kashmir side so we need kashmir same like that story afghanistan people will tell or people or some rulers which come later they will tell like our pashtun population is here so we are not happy with the durand line and that is why fighting is happening that's why i told it's not the external factors like usa uk alone which is responsible for the state of afghanistan now these internal rulers who are good for nothing and knows only this capturing positions okay places okay they don't know to develop what place they have they don't know to set up schools or hospitals or anything uh, even covid vaccine nothing they will be doing but they want more and more area for no reason just in the name of religion okay so this is what is happening i will tell you with person's name now so that you understand the story and the most important and most best person is uh, this one okay i'll show you who is and what are the contributions but before that the timeline okay 20th century begins 1907 agreement between british and russia okay after the durand line british uh, and russia signs and so russia will sell okay we will stay away you also stay away now afghanistan you do whatever you want okay and then after that 1918 uh, communist revolution you know their lenin will come into power later stalin will come to power so it's total communism and anti religion kind of their own uh, policies which is a different topic okay 1921 the britishers are defeated in the third british afghan war which i told and afghanistan becomes an independent nation 
concerned that Afghanistan has fallen behind the rest of the world. Okay, this time, this person, Amir Amanullah Khan, who is one of the best person, if he was ruling there, Afghan would have become like Europe. So he begins a rigorous campaign of socio-economic reforms. Okay, he is the one who transformed uh, Afghanistan and made that first pictures which I showed you, all the modern life. Okay. 1926, he declares Afghanistan a monarchy. Okay, now a monarchy rather than an emirate. So there is no emir concept now. There is king and queen. So he is king and he launches a series of modernization plans. Critics, obviously the orthodox people, the Sharia people, the Islam who are want that orthodox lifestyle was frustrated by his policies and then starts fighting against him and unfortunately he will be having to run away from the country. Okay, so that detailing also we'll see in the next slide. But the first thing is that he married a woman and only one woman, that is the biggest first change which he did, meaning all the people before him used to have three wife or four wife or hundred four children among them. So it was like a very unorganized kind of life with polygamy and all. But he married this woman who is again a brilliant person who both these both together will change the face of Afghanistan. Okay, they will fight against polygamy, they will fight against dowry system, they will fight against all the women related atrocities and they set up a modern Afghanistan with their kind of lifestyle. Okay, they were actually living the proper European lifestyle which other Britishers and uh, other people were living, okay, French and British and all. So they were doing excellently well, but as I told, whenever something good is happening, this religion thing will come in between and spoil everything. Okay, that is when, that is why most of the countries are fighting. If you take any Islamic country in Africa or in Europe or wherever there is Islamic country in Central Asia, they are fighting. They have just one religion. They have just, if there is Islam, in between that also Sunni and Shia will fight. Okay, but it's better to have multiple religions than an Islamic country. That is what I would suggest. Uh, not only Islam, if there should be no Hindu country, there should be no Islam country, there should be no Christian country. If there is one religion, it is again going to cause fight only. Rather, it should have many religions and a democracy. Okay. So if you see this is one of the interesting event at a public function, Amanullah said that Islam did not require women to cover their bodies or wear any special kind of veil. That is the parda kind of thing. And at the conclusion of the speech, this queen, that is uh, Soraya, she tore off that uh, hijab or veil and in public. And this was followed by other officers, wives who were in that uh, meeting. They all tore that parda and they were showing a... Uh, this thing like protest and this is when these people were attacked and they had to run away from the country okay and one interesting thing i'll tell you the timeline okay when uh, 1923 uh, rebellion happened it failed 1924 another rebellion happened that also failed 1928-29 these people got defeated and they had to run away but interesting thing is they ran away and came to india okay they came to india in a play i think mumbai they came and there they had a daughter and they named their daughter as india okay these are very interesting historical facts which i thought you should know and after that uh, they uh, settled and i think they went to rome okay whoever is running away from this side is going to rome i don't know the reason for that but they were running away to rome that time i will show you more personalities in the next slides so this princess india okay she is there uh, alive now okay if you see uh, uh, age 92 Okay, now it's 94, 90, okay, this is the latest screenshot, 92 only, okay, because I had taken a screenshot of her interview, if you see, uh, during interview in 2019, age 92, okay, so she is there in Rome now, but uh, if their, uh, her parents, these two people were there in Afghanistan for some more time, they would be, be making Afghanistan exactly like, uh, like uh, Turkey is there now and all, like very modern, okay, it would have been like that, but unfortunately, they were thrown out and that is why Afghanistan is in the state of affairs as we see now, okay. Then again, British had helped. This actually, I told you, whenever something, a gap comes, these Britishers will come in. Okay, like these people were thrown out. Now these extremists are powerful. That time, British will come and start funding them and helping them. And uh, some new king is set up, Nadir Shah, which again, not important for you. His son is important. Okay, after him, his son will come, Zahir Shah. So Zahir Shah comes and he... A good thing is he also wanted modernization. Okay, even though British put him in his father in rule and all, he was uh, in support of modernization. Okay, he's the son of Nadir Shah, as I told. He uh, brings up a lot of stability and for the next 40 years, he'll be king. But always, as I told, when someone is doing something good, there'll be someone else to spoil it. Okay. And this is the time also when United States formally recognized Afghanistan. And 1947, you know what happened? The Britishers were weakening and they were going out everywhere. They created a, a secular India and a Islamic Pakistan. And uh, the nation of Pakistan includes a long, large, uncontrollable border with Afghanistan. You know that border, right? Durand line. So as I told, the Pashtun was there here and there. So they who were there, okay, not Zahir Shah, another person. Zahir Shah is the president there but uh, or king there. That time, another person was there who was the prime minister there who, whose name is uh, Daud Khan. Daud Khan did not like this Durand line. Okay, when British are leaving, they put this Durand line permanent and went. So he is telling Pashtuns are here also, this uh, Daud Khan, who is the PM. Another thing is he's uh, not only a PM, he is the... Uh, cousin okay he's the cousin of this king what i'm telling is both are from the same royal family but their ideologies are different one want modernization the other person daud can also want modernization but his concept is he don't believe in durand line he want more area and he will modernize everything so obviously there'll be a fight 
ओके सो जाहिर शाह वर्सेस दाऊद खान सो दिस इज दाऊद खान इन पिक्चर्स यू सी एंड इंटरेस्टिंग थिंग इज ही टुक लॉट ऑफ हेल्प फ्रॉम कम्युनिस्ट रशिया दैट टाइम आई टोल्ड रशिया इज इन कम्युनिज्म ही लॉट ऑफ मिलिट्री असिस्टेंस लॉट ऑफ इकोनॉमिक सो इट वाज कंप्लीटली डिपेंडेंट ऑन रशिया एंड ही यूज्ड टू टेक लॉट ऑफ थिंग्स फॉर वुमेन आल्सो लॉट ऑफ गुड थिंग्स ही हैव डन आई एम नॉट टेलिंग ही इज इवन दो हिज पश्टून थिंग एंड बॉर्डर प्रॉब्लम्स आर देयर ही हैव डन अ लॉट ऑफ गुड थिंग्स लाइक वुमेन प्रेजेंस इफ यू सी बाय बिकमिंग क्लोज टाइज विद रशिया ही मेड वुमेन एंटर द Uh, workforce and all but uh, as i told because this problem of uh, border thing is there zahir shah the king will not be happy with daud khan so he will make new rules of elections in which he will tell no one from the royal family should uh, participate in the election so what will happen zahir shah himself and this person himself daud khan cannot participate in election so obviously that is when the fight will begin and uh, each will kill each other and they will die okay so that will come later but if you see Uh, to be voted and vote meaning women can stand for election also women can vote also so that kind of modernization was there these are pictures as i told this is the olden times this is the new times and these are people going to colleges and universities and see this are like from a movie scene or from a european country okay so this is actually afghan uh, women at that time this if you see this lab uh, scenes are there experiment scenes are there this used to be the state of affairs but now unfortunately it's, it's all gone and it's going to go back to the stone age if taliban is going to rule okay and this is john of kennedy the usa so as i told daud khan was taking help from russia also taking help from usa also and lot of funding were coming in that is how they were modernizing okay see this much uh, kind of neat city it was that time in the uh, 70s okay and this again zahir shah going in uh, envoy with his uh, uh, this uh, bodyguards and all these people he is going on the road you can see it, it doesn't look like a Uh, the image which you have about afghanistan now it's looking like a proper uh, country only okay and then there is something called the hippie life which will come which will be the concluding part of this video i'll tell you another thing you know when this election and all these thing comes political parties will come so political parties two important political parties are one is pdpa which is the communist kind of party and islamist which you know is the islamic kind of uh, uh, ideology okay so these two will come up 1973 one zahir khan when he was out of town okay before that uh, election and all these thing happens this uh, pm daud will organize a military coup which always happens in every country uh, you know in myanmar also it's happening this military coup when it comes when the ruler is not there someone else will take power so daud khan will become the new president okay and he declares afghanistan as a public he will uh, throw away all the existing people officers the judiciary parliament everything is gone and again zahir khan is also shah is also running to italy okay so italy you know as i told everybody are running to italy don't know why but they are going then banks are getting nationalized fully modern life this hippies are coming in and tourism was boosted like anything okay so these are the scenes if you see so when you see these kind of things you know who will not be happy the people who are the critical uh, people the religious people the orthodox people they are not going to be happy when these kind of uh, dressing and this kind of lifestyle is going on women are roaming around freely you know these people will not like it that is when more and more uh, tribal people will grow okay so hippie it ended when it ended in 1970 late 1970 when the iranian revolution will happen and the soviet invasion also will happen okay this is the next part of the video which you have to know but uh, hippie life ended and the entry of ussr begins so at this point i'll stop this video because it's already 30 minutes the next video will explain you uh, what happened when if you see here uh, ussr invades afghanistan this is the main thing which you want to know from here i know and then who were ruling there who were the, see mujahideen is created mujahideen is the like predecessor kind of thing of this uh, taliban you can tell and so after that osama bin laden story is there so this and all we'll discuss in the next part okay entire uh, slides are ready i can take it but i don't want to make the video lengthy okay so we discussed here most ancient timelines the 1700s identity of afghanistan britisher story then durand line and internal politics the modernization programs and now we have to study the russia versus afghanistan mujahideen taliban usa and the taliban al qaeda usa so this in the next part we will do i hope that will be a last part or maybe if needed third part we'll make okay so this is what i am going to do in this series if you want this series please subscribe please like it please share it to more maximum people only then we can do this kind of detailing okay so i hope you enjoyed the video thank you and have a nice day